So this is the Harris Music Building now, but while I was growing up on campus, it was the Music Annex. And this is where my parents taught piano lessons. My mother's piano studio was on the right and my father's studio was on the left. They each had two Steinway Grands in the studios. So I would sit and listen to the piano lessons as they were going on, being taught to their students. This is where I spent many years going back and forth between my parents' studios, listening to Fisk students having their lessons. When we were talking about Jessie Norman, I heard uh, the other day an interview she had done on NPR, and uh, the interviewer was asking her if uh, her parents pushed her, if she felt pressure to sing, and she said, uh, no, her parents never pushed her. She was always encouraged. And then she said, I never had a stage mother. She was not the kind of woman who hadn't been allowed to do something or something like that, and okay. then therefore forced her daughter yes, to do what she hadn't been able to do. And I'm listening to her and I'm thinking, oop, <laughs> she's just described my mother. <laughs> she just laid it out. You know, a black ooh. American woman who was not allowed to yeah. have the career that she set out to yeah. have, yeah. and then turns around and demands that her daughter do what she wasn't able to accomplish. Uh. And then you have a different relationship with the art when it's coming from a parent who is just so frustrated and angry with this country who hasn't been able to accomplish. I mean, she, we were just talking about this. She had uh, gotten a contract to perform with the Charleston, West Virginia Symphony, and the conductor at the time engaged her, and then he, he died suddenly. I don't know if it was an accident, heart attack, or whatever. And then they brought in a replacement conductor who was just a vicious racist. When and just canceled her contract. This black woman's not going to play this. Song. Exactly, and she would have been the first <clears throat> right. African American to, to pianist, pianist to perform with them. Yeah. And in her so, home, in her home state. In her home state, mm. and uh, Natalie and Darius, the same thing. She wasn't allowed to play. She had a contract to perform with an orchestra in Texas, and then when they found out she was black, canceled her contract. Yeah. And then to think how many women in this country, black American women, are walking around. Yeah carrying that level of frustration and anger in their gut. Yeah. It's hor horrible to think about it. Um, that, you know, you, you spend so much time uh, working on this, this, because the piano is jealous, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you're gonna spend, yeah. if you're gonna be good, you're gonna spend time. Your yeah. lifetime. Yeah, you're gonna spend so. But you know, I, I always thought about this with, with you, Naya, because my experience with becoming a pianist was so much different than yours because mm -hmm. my parents were not pianists. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, oh, this is so special that our kid is doing this and everybody kind of, you know, um, got out the way. But for you, it had to be such pressure mm. because both your parents were fantastic pianists. Yeah. You know, and yeah. then you were a fantastic pianist or are. But still, you know, even as fantastic as you were, I'm sure that, uh, that note. Uh -huh. ah, that, that, that phrase, that phrase. So, so um, it, keeping the joy in it must have been tough. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, it yeah. was difficult. It yeah. was difficult. And also with both of them carrying their frustrations over right. not being able to accomplish yeah. what they, so, I guess, yeah. were led to believe that they, they would be able to accomplish. You know, right. they had no idea when they set out that they were going to be faced with all of this discrimination right. and mm -hmm. doors closed in their faces. Yeah. You know, but when you, when you first start to, to this journey uh, on what, um, uh, attempting to be uh, a piano virtuoso, when you first start on this journey, it's very innocent because you just desire to play that. Mm -hmm. I want to play that. Then you see somebody, you, you know, you get a role model. For your dad, it was mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. For me, it was Watts. I saw that... Uh, that the Young People's Concert with right. Leonard Bernstein. Leonard Bernstein. I saw that, and I didn't, I didn't realize for years that not only did I identify with him being young, but I identified with him being black, too. Right, right. You know, I'm starting to play the piano. I guess I was maybe five, six, seven, something like that. And I see this kid on there, you know, and everybody's like, hey, I can do that. And then my father tells me, well, you know, concert pianos, you got to practice eight hours a day. So now I'm trying to practice for eight hours a day, and I mm -hmm. was getting that in. Mm -hmm. But that's what, it, that's what it takes. And then... After you do all of that, after you do all of that to, to, to get there, and then 
you're 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 able to do it. You're able to play that Rachmaninoff. You're you're able to play that that uh, Scriabin, yeah. and then you can't go in there because you're black. Mm-hmm. Can't enter a competition. You can't enter a competition because you're black. After I spent my life <sighs> preparing this, Child. you know, eight hours, ten hours a day working on this. That's right. Oh my God. That's yeah, right. Yeah, and they yeah. and that's the thing, the more talented you are, the more they push you. Yeah, because right. you're the one who has the potential. You, you know, they're yeah. not gonna let you slack. Yeah. And then you get up there and then I can't tell you the number of applications for international piano competitions, supposedly international piano <laughs> competitions in this country. And my applications weren't weren't accepted. Wow. I was not allowed to compete. Wow. You know, and here I've got a master's from Juilliard. Wow. And you're going to tell me I can't go compete? You can't even get it. Ooh, I was ready to strangle yeah. somebody. You know? that's, that's when I started, um, again, I started to look at, um, for, for guidance, the career of another former Jubilee singer, Roland Hayes. Mm -hmm. You know, that I'll just make my own audiences. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll cultivate my own fan base and I'll play to them and I'll make myself a success like that. There you and go. And sing great. And right, so and spend that, time abroad. Yeah, yeah live yeah. in Europe. Yeah, yeah, where it's where uh, it's not so stark and not so harsh, you know, for uh, as far as uh, accepting the artists. Mm -hmm. Plus, mm -hmm. when you do it over there and come back over here, it's a trump card. There you, you go. Know? There it's you go. And they card. need to see that you have a career over there yeah. first yeah. before they'll accept you here. If you would like to see more clips from the Noshing with Nina show. Make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell.